interesting to me that the writer of Hebrews, that this is the one thing that he records out of Joseph's extraordinary life. That Joseph trusted in the promises of God. That's the one thing he's, he puts in the hall of faith. Joseph's trust in the promises of God. You know, there is no account of God ever giving special revelation to Joseph. In other words, God never like appeared to Joseph the way that God appeared to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Jo Joseph's life of faith, listen, it was solely based on the word of God. The word of God. That's it. No special appearance from God, no physical appearance of God like to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. All Joseph had was the word of God and Joseph believed God's word. Now, listen, listen, listen. We have the Bible. We have the Bible. You, you probably have a Bible in your lap. If you don't, we've got a free Bible for you to take home. You have the word of God. We have the, the word of God. And in God's word, we have all that we need for the life of faith. We have all that we need for the life of faith. We don't need anything else. We don't need anything more. For a life. Of godliness, we have the Bible, we have the word of God, we are thoroughly listen, we are thoroughly equipped for everything by the word. By the scriptures, if you're a Christian, if you're a Christian, you have Jesus Christ. You have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. And you have the word of God, you have everything you need for life, you don't need anything else. You don't need anything more. You've got it all. Joseph has this one promise that was made to Abraham about bringing them back to the land of Canaan. And he believes what God says in his word. He believes the promise of God. That God will one day bring them back to the land of Canaan. Now, one last point before we dig into the text. If you're taking notes, the key verse for Joseph's life is Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. I'll read it to you. This is after Joseph has revealed himself to his brothers. And Joseph says to his brothers, you intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of of many people. This is what this is what Joseph's story is all about. What his brothers intended for evil. God used for good in his life. And God used those terrible circumstances in Joseph's life. To put him in a position to save the lives of many people. That's his story. So now look at chapter 37, turn back there if you're not there already. Chapter 37, and we'll look at this together. Verse one again. Now, Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. This is the history of Jacob. Joseph being 17 years old, 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brothers and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father. And so right here we begin to see the origin of the hatred of Joseph's brothers for Joseph. We're told that Joseph was 17 years old. He was caring for his father's flocks with some of his half brothers, the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah. They had the same father, Jacob, but different different mothers. Now, in case you don't remember the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, were Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. I didn't remember either. I had to look it up. So he, he's out there watching over the father's flocks with his half-brothers out there 
in the field. And then at the end of verse 2, we're told that Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father. I don't believe Joseph was tattling on his brothers. I don't think it's telling us that Joseph was just a big tattletale. I don't think Joseph went crying to his dad, Dad, my brothers were mean to me. You know, my, my brothers wouldn't share their food with me. It's not saying he's a tattletale. As Joseph's story unfolds, we see in his later actions that, that Joseph had great integrity, that, that Joseph had character, that he was trustworthy, that he was moral, even, even as a teenager, even at a very young age. And, and it seems, as we go through the passage, it seems that Joseph was given a position of authority or oversight by his, his father. His dad put him in charge. And so Joseph now, he comes back to his father and he gives his father a, a report. And it's a bad report. Dad, my, my brothers weren't really keeping an eye on the flock like they, they should be. They were, you know, they were looking at their phones the whole time when they should have been watching the flock. And so Joseph's integrity, I think, contributed to his, brother, their, his brother's hatred uh, for him. If, you know, if you're a person of integrity, sometimes people that lack integrity despise you for your integrity. They don't, you, know, you maybe have experienced that in the workplace, you know, where people that aren't, aren't really doing what they're supposed to do, they don't like that you do do what you're supposed to do. So now verse 3, now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. Also, he made him a tunic of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Jacob loved Joseph more than his other sons. And this was abundantly clear to everyone. And this no doubt created a, a very you know, unhealthy family dynamic between Joseph and his brothers. This fueled the animosity that his brothers felt towards Joseph. We're also told that Jacob gave Joseph a coat of many colors. Now this, again, it's, the text is not telling us that just to say that Joseph had a really cool coat. Right? There's a reason here that we're told this. The, the coat of many colors, or, or more literally, it's, it's a long coat with sleeves... It means that Joseph was given a position of authority over his brothers. Even today, uh, you go into some businesses, you go into some stores, uh, the manager has a different outfit on than some of the, the, you know, the regular line employees. You know, he's, uh, the manager has a different uniform or the manager is wearing a suit so that you know he or she is the manager. And they're identified by different clothing. Uh, Joseph was given this coat by his father because he's been put in charge over his brothers. Some scholars uh, believe the coat indicates that Jacob had given Joseph the birthright. And that Jacob's intention was for Joseph to uh, become the future leader of the family and have the birthright. That's a possibility. Now remember, Joseph is the 11th son of 12 sons. He's, he's next to last in the birth order. He's way down the line as far as birthright goes. But Joseph has been bumped to the front of the line in the family. And he's been put in charge by dad. Because dad loves him the most. Because he's, he's trustworthy. Plus, Joseph is the firstborn son of Rachel, the wife that Jacob loved and wanted to marry. 